Hey crafters, I'm getting ready to start my second diamond painting and I'm so excited. I'm gonna do a drill with me and thanks for being here and watching this video. I'm gonna start working on a custom of myself and my dog that my husband ordered me for Christmas. I previously did an unboxing for this video and if you wanna go back and check it out, you can see. But we're gonna get started. This is a 40 by 25 centimeter, and I have already done my inventory and put everything into my drill box. You may notice this is different from the one that I got for Christmas that I showed off. I actually ran out of room in my luggage, so I had to, I had to ship it. So it'll be, take about two weeks to reach here in Tunisia. And I'm gonna take the camera off of the stand real quick to show you our special guest. It's Axel himself. Axel, you want to say hi to everybody? Axel? Axel? Hey buddy. Hey. Axel is a Chihuahua pug and he's 10 years old. Axel! That is his seat where he kind of hangs out while I'm diamond painting. So, I'm gonna go back and let's get started. I hope that angle is okay. I can zoom in a little bit. I've got all my tools with me. I have the white tray, which I actually prefer. This spout makes it so easy to put the diamonds in and out of these little tiny boxes that I'm currently using my red wax, and a brand new diamond painting pen. So, if I was smart, I would have had scissors here for the white page, and I could only take a little section off, but I don't have scissors at the moment. I will get that for my next draw with me. Oh man, I don't wanna start with a picture of myself. Hmm. I'm gonna start with a picture of Axel. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this side because I wanna start with the picture of the dog. And I actually really wanna kinda of start with his fur, the different shades they have here. This looks like a eye. I'm gonna go ahead and start with this eye, kinda of random, in the middle of my canvas, but with the darker light, um, it's nighttime right now, with the darker light, it makes it more difficult to see the letters of my canvas. And I'm really looking forward to when my light board shows up. I showed you in a previous video the light board, but I didn't have any room in my luggage. So I had to ship all of it from the United States to Tunisia. So hopefully I get in about two weeks. This eye color is 451. And it's actually kind of a gray. No, not, not a gray. Um, if you took a little bit of cream, a little bit of brown, and a little hint of gray and mix them together, that's what this color would be. And I got the suggestion in a previous video of putting it on the table, putting my drills on the table and shaking them. Mm. Look at that. It's a really, really good line I'm getting there. And this is the color that's coming across. It's coming across a little darker on the screen and actually a little more of a cream brown, but I, I promise you there's a slight gray in here. Got my wax. Gosh. I used so little wax in my last diamond painting. This is probably enough for 10. Got my wax going. Okay. Let's get started on Axel. First one in. There we go. So as I mentioned earlier, Axel is 10 years old. He's a Chihuahua pug, and I absolutely adore him. He is my first baby. So I went ahead and got started, looked at the camera, and realized 
nothing I was doing was on the camera. <laughs> so I got a few in here and it's looking pretty good. The, um, the smell of the glue is pretty, pretty powerful on this one. So as I'm leaning over and working, I'm smelling it. It's like, whoa, okay. Take a break and lean back. But anyways, wanted to talk to you about Axel and Axel's adoption story. I love hearing pet adoption stories. I just enjoy other people talking about the moment that they just knew that that animal was going to be a part of their family. And I talk about Axel's adoption story. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Axel is 10 years old. We have had Axel for now seven and a half years. When we adopted him, he was somewhere in between the ages of two and three. And we just kind of counted him as being three. And we figured we would rather um, possibly do some preventative stuff if, if he was considered a little older of, okay, you know, he's this old, you know, let's start treating him like he's a, kind of an older dog. And when, um, we also felt that he wasn't really, he was a puppy when we got him, but you could tell he was at the end of that super puppy stage. So we had been looking at dogs for weeks, um, actually months but we had been seriously looking of, we are ready to add a dog to our family for three weeks. We went to different adoption events. We actually drove around our area, which was Northern Virginia at the time, going into PetSmarts on Saturday and Sunday to see their dog adoption events. And it's probably the same all around the country where you know they have a, an organization that they work with that organization shows up on the weekends and you can see dogs that are available for adoption. So the first three weeks, um, you know, we saw a lot of cute animals. It's just none that we had a connection with or that just instant bonding. In the fourth week, we were coming up with different errands we wanted to do. And it was Saturday. And my husband, we were just like, okay, we need to go to Ikea. And the Ikea is right next to a PetSmart. And my husband's plan was, no, this isn't a good week. Let's just go to Ikea first and then do PetSmart later. Probably thinking maybe I would forget or I'd just be too tired because we, we had a lot to do that day. And and I was kind of like, no, 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 let's just, let's just pop into PetSmart for just for a few minutes, let's just check them out, see. Look at, the, look at the different dogs. So we drove down, we went to PetSmart, and at this one, the dog adoptions were set up in the back. They have a, a large space where all of the animals in crates or cages can hang out, be on display, put on a leash, walk around, see if you have a connection, if you've made that bond. So we walked in. We walked all the way to the back, and we walked the entire line of dogs. And it was my husband who said, hey, what about this little guy? I'm like, oh, and he's pointing at Axel. I'm like, he's pretty cute. He's a cute little dog. We kind of talked about it. I'm like, well, what do you think? Do you like this dog? And I'm like, yeah, I like this dog. Do you think this dog likes us? And it's like, well, let's see. And we asked to hold him. And a woman came over, opened the crate, and I held him first. And oh my goodness, once I held him, it was that instant connection, instant love. And I, I asked some questions about him. And I was like, well, what breed do you think he is? And she said, well, we think he is a chug, a chihuahua pug. And I don't know why, that just made him even more adorable. He was actually in a little crate 
that was placed on top of a larger dog's crate. So when we saw him, he was shaking and he was scared. He had that koala, uh, chihuahua trait of shaking. And when we picked him up, he just stopped shaking and seemed happy to be out of the cage. And it just felt perfect. So we both hauled him. We put him back in the crate and we have that little huddle where we're like, what do you think? Is this our dog? Do you like this dog? <laughs> and I think we both, we both instantly knew like, yeah, we like this dog. We are not getting to Ikea today. <laughs> we filled out an application and, you know, they had an interview with us. They discussed what our, our backgrounds with dogs were and I actually hadn't hadn't had a dog and my husband had had a dog for a long period of time for the dog's whole life and they said okay you know we think you understand the responsibility of a dog we think you can provide a very great home for the dog and we got to adopt him what we actually did is um they then, I don't remember if they put something on his crate or if they just, you know, told people he was no longer available. But once they said that, you know, we could bring him home, we got a cart and we just went through that PetSmart and bought so many little things for him. You know, food dish, water dish, food, leash, a little bed, a crate, all this different stuff, <laughs> a name tag. And, you know, we went back, picked him up and we just walked right out of that store with him. And my husband said that he knew we were, me, the dog and I were just connected when um, we got in the car. We drove away and we got a few miles down the street when we were, we received a phone call. And we were told like, oh gosh, you guys, you forgot his adoption paperwork, the paperwork from kind of the, the dog pound that he was picked up at. And we turned around, went back and I, um, I left my husband and the dog in the car while I went in the store and my husband said that the whole time I was gone, the dog watched me walk in and just waited, waited for me to come back. So we were pretty much, him and I, the dog and me were a bonded pair from that moment. <laughs> That's Axel's adoption story. When we got to our house, we entered and we took him off the leash and he just sprinted through the house, running as fast as he could, tail wagging. Oh, and uh, I think he knew from that moment, like this was home. This is my family. And um, it was so funny. Oh, I'm struggling with this drill. Let me try out my new tweezers. The new metal tweezers that came with this painting. Mm, better than the plastic ones already. Oh wow, yeah, much better than the plastic ones. So good, uh, good tweezers. Um, Axel, he just sprinted around. When we first got him, he, he didn't, you know, we just introduced him to so much. Um, I fed him like people food, maybe a few days in. And I was like, do you like this? Probably just something simple, sandwich deli meat. And he just looked at me like, what in the world is in your head? Like, what are you giving me? <laughs> and I'm like, no, really, you'll like it, try it. So we gave him his first people food. Oh, there's not a drill there. Kind of in a really sad way, we bought him toys at PetSmart and he didn't play with any of them. He didn't know what to do with a toy. So this dog was between two and three years old and didn't play with toys, didn't do anything like that. And it was a few weeks in, he would kind of sniff the toy and be like, oh, okay. Walk away from the toy, walk up to the toy. And one day he was in, I think our bedroom. And I was like wondering, where's the dog? Where's the dog? I go in there 
and he was playing, like sniffing. He put this toy in his mouth. He shook it around, shook his head. And I'm like, oh my gosh, he is playing with a toy. So we got to see the first time you ever played with a dog toy. Also that first night we got him, it was bedtime and he's just kind of by the bed. And we're like, come here, buddy, come here. Come up on the bed. Yeah, you can sleep in the bed, it's okay. I mean, he's so little. It's not like he's a large dog. He is a tiny little thing. So we were like, yeah, he can sleep in the bed. And he was really confused. So the previous house he was in did not allow him on the furniture, I guess. If he was in a house, we're actually not sure if he was in a house or not. But um, the first time he went on a bed and he just circled around and then plopped down, he found his little spot that was a sweet moment with him. Um, the place we got him from, it was it's a group called Pet Assistance League, and they're still active. They're they've moved a little bit, a little bit more south, I think. I don't think they're doing shows, or <laughs> shows. I don't think they're doing the adoption in Northern Virginia anymore. I think they're just a little bit, a little bit south, down 95. And we got paperwork of when he was at um, kind of the pound. And we looked into that pound and it was a kill shelter. It's a high kill shelter. So we're very thankful that they were able to adopt him out of the shelter and then that we were able to adopt him long-term. He had a quote unquote brother with him and we're not sure if they were actually brothers. They were adopted at the same time, or they were brought in at the same time to the shelter. And um, his brother was not there the day we adopted Axel. He was still, um, you know, at the foster's house. So the next week, you know, we're so in love with Axel. The next week, now five weeks, we'll go back to that animal adoption to see if the brother was there. Of, okay, if they're brothers, maybe we adopt both brothers. And we went there, and his brother was there, and we walked up to the, cr the crate that he was in, and his brother just started barking at us. He, you know, didn't want us to open his crate, didn't want us to put our hands in, and I think it was pretty obvious that the the brother just didn't choose us as his family. We were we were okay with that, but we thought about adopting them both. It just didn't didn't work out. You know, as much as you choose a pet, the pet also chooses you. And if it's not the right choice, it's just not gonna work out. I am really looking forward. Oh, no drill on that one. I'm really looking forward to working on this because it gives me a chance to talk about how much I love him, my little pup pup. So I've worked on kind of an outline of his fur right here in the letter I, and I'm going to start some drills to fill in the space. So I have a few more. This was 453. I'll put this one back in. And this symbol, it looks like a U. Does that zoom in anymore? Yes, it does. My goodness. So I'm going to go and find the U. This actually helps by having the symbol on my box. Really good idea because working from this side over, my color key is kind of obstructed still by the the white cover. Oh, I have a lot of U. Okay, okay. I have four boxes of this U color. So this is really the dominant color in this project. Yeah, if I remember correctly, there was 11 bags. So let me get it out and show you. On this project, U is 3756. Hmm. And put it in here. For some reason, it looks almost like a it's a 
white, but I want to say there's a tiny hint of almost green in that. I mean, it's definitely a white, but there is a hint of something else. Lay them out and let's get started. There we go. My first deal. Oh, I love popping that drill right in when it's surrounded by other drills. Like, boop, pops it right in. Boop. Quite a bit of this EU color. I feel like I'm almost zoomed in too much. So let me see if you guys zoom out a bit. You can't even see Axel when it's zoomed in. Oh, there we go. You can see it's here. At this point, Axel is an older pup, and he likes spending his days lounging around the house and avoiding the kids. <laughs> the kids love him so much, they just want to play and pet and hug him. <laughs> and Axel is just like, I just want to sleep, let me sleep. Every now and then, Axel will still surprise us. He'll take out a toy and he'll want to play and run around. And he's still our little pup. Oh, I feel like I don't have that drill on. There we go. Oh, my hand keeps sticking to the canvas working this way. Uh, for my next drill with me, I will actually get scissors and I will do, I will cut chunks. That way I'm only working on a very small chunk. I only have a small bit of the canvas exposed and I think that will help from my hand. I'm not sticking on here all the time. Hmm. There we go. Axel has taken very well to Tunisia. I mean, it's beautiful here, it's warm and he likes the temperature. Just tries to find a sunny spot and just stay there and some days I just have let him go outside and he just curls up in the driveway and just suns himself. <laughs> so the weather here is very enjoyable. Oh, this one's popping up a little. Push that one down. There we go. I don't know if they're popping because I'm putting them not fully in the circle meaning that the next one gets put in not enough space because the first one's over. Or if it's popping because of the canvas. I don't think it's popping because of the canvas. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with the canvas. So it's gotta be me doing it. Anyways, when we move onto another post, it's gonna be cold. Axel is not a friend of cold. <laughs> he He's kind of a little spoiled dog, too. It's just like, you want me to put my paws in snow? What are you talking about, Mom? He just kind of looks at me. I'm like, I am not going out in that today. <laughs> or if it's raining. It, it's, uh, we're, I guess we're kind of coming out of the season with a lot of rain in Tunisia. But in the fall and early winter when it rains, oh my goodness, that little prince pup would just be like, oh, mm-mm. I'll stay inside today. <laughs> I'm not getting my little paws wet. <laughs> I promise you, I've even held an umbrella over him while he's, while I'm trying to convince him to go outside. He does not fall for it. <laughs> yeah, oh, I don't know. Okay, my wax is running through pretty quickly because I'm, I need some more now. Mm, get the wax. Okay. Yeah, so it's full. It's full in there. Let's see how long this goes for. Yeah, it's got to be me putting it in the wrong spot because here's another one where I just put it outside of the line. So the other drill just would not be able to place in its spot well. Wow, these tweezers are good. 
And the glue is good. I can't even pull it off right now. There we go. There we go. Where was that one? I think it's that one. Push it down. Awesome. Well, Axel loves the heat here. We go to the beach often. I mean, it's, it's Tunisia. We have a lot of beach. And another little um, spoiled dog thing of him it, with his paws. Again, he doesn't like his paws in the sand. He doesn't like the wind at the beach. <laughs> Axel just, that's the pug side of him. He just wants to kind of lounge around all day. Hmm. Get in there. Yeah, maybe since it's a little, I'm, I'm doing this at night, so I have less light. It's all overhead light, and with the colors being a little darker, it's difficult to see. So maybe I am not putting them in the right spot. Tomorrow I will do a drill with me, and I will better work on... I will better work on uh, trying to see the, the letters. Really looking forward to when that light pad arrives. I just, I couldn't fit the Christmas items in our luggage back, so I had to ship it. Well, actually, I, uh, I took the princess ensemble, ensemble back and I took the these customs because I wanted to make sure that they stayed uh, in, in good shape, so I packed them really well in luggage. But the other items, the bead box, the light pad. Those should be arriving soon. I mean, the mailing here is pretty good. Like, around two weeks. It's not bad for overseas mail, especially for a place where it's not like a direct, direct shot. We have to all of our mail routes through Europe and then comes down into Africa. But yeah, that light pad's gonna be really helpful on these. Um, you know, I was talking about starting on the other side and then I started on this one so I can start with the dog, but then I was also considering starting up in the corner um, and doing these greens down here. Green is my favorite color. So I was really attracted to doing the greens, but um, I just couldn't see them. I can't see those symbols that well. So I decided for nighttime drilling, these lighter symbols are gonna be my friend. And during daytime drilling, I will move on to the darker green. Cause there's also a little bit, of, uh, looks like some slight browns mixed in. This photo was originally taken outside. So it does have some greenery and some branches in the back. It's just a little too dark. It's just too, too dark. This is one of three for the customs. I feel like I'm, I'm getting a lot of drills that just aren't, aren't sticking and I feel like I'm almost out of wax. Again, going really fast. Um, don't know why we get more. There's an expert watching if you've experienced this, if I'm doing something wrong that is causing a lot of the wax to come out quicker, please let me know. See, when I put the wax on, I have this, it's not, um, there we go, that's better. It's kind of hanging off the side, so I take my fingers and try to remove that excess wax. But then the first one or two drills that I put on with the wax and the canvas, I feel that that drill then has some of the wax on it. So I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong, if I'm doing something wrong. Anyways, oh, whoa, I got two with that one. I don't even remember what I was talking about. Shipping maybe? Hmm. Oh, drilling during the day versus drilling at night. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I need an expert help because look now, I've um, done a few more drills and the wax is like popping out. 
So I don't know if it's this drill pen. This is a new drill pen. This is actually not the one that the canvas came with. I don't know if that makes or breaks it. The canvas, this company actually sends drill pens with only the one piece and not the three. And I didn't have much success with the three piece for my first time in painting, but I'm determined to try it again. So that's why I picked this drill, this drill pen. I'm like, okay, let's do this. Let's start the, let's start to get more comfortable with the three. And this drill that I just did right there, it, you can see it's covered in wax. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. I didn't have this issue with my first one. Maybe I'm just rusty and I need some time to get back in the swing of things. Okay, I'm struggling. There we go. Get in. Yeah, I made that one way too tight. That's on me. Put that one in there. Having circle drills in the circles on the canvas, the individual spots are closer than the first one that I did, which is probably completely normal. The first one I did had round drills in square spots. So I gave a little extra room for each drill, so I just need to work on getting used to kind of the normal way of things, because a lot of what I see in other videos show a round drill means the canvas has circles on it. Mm. Hmm. Looking pretty good. Working up his fur. Probably finish this chunk right here for this first drill with me for this canvas. And yeah. Oh gosh. So, right now, beginning of January in Tunisia. The weather is beautiful. It is bright and sunny all day and 60 degrees. 60 degrees. Like for me, 60 degrees is still a light, uh, is like a t-shirt or a light long sleeve shirt. It's not cold at all. It's beautiful to walk around here. I mean, 60 degrees, we still have people on the beach. Yeah, the, the spots for the drills are smaller. I think that's what my problem is. Just get used to it and I'll do better. This is exciting. I'm so gonna love doing this picture of Axel. I'll end up finishing this side first and then I'll have to do the other side with my face. Like, ow, oh, mm, just working on my face here. <laughs> As I look back at the beautiful picture of Axel. The glue of this canvas is strong. It is really strong. Really strong. Okay. Go. Cool. Okay. Wrapping up. I'm actually gonna shake my tray again to try and get. Oh no no no! The you know the glue is really strong, smelling, and it's also really really strong glue. Once you put that drill right down in that glue, it is stuck, and you do need the good tweezers. I'm glad they send good tweezers. On my first um my first diamond painting that I did, if I put it in slightly the wrong spot, I could just nudge it back to where it needed to be. This one, mm -mm, no nudging. That is some good glue. Strong smelling, but good. I mean, nothing's popping off. Nothing's popping off this canvas. There we go. Straight, straight my drill. Get them a little better lined up. I'm gonna try and do my drill with me's more frequently in between 
different videos of me chatting about my crafts or videos of knitting or, oh goodness, hopefully not too many unboxing videos because I need to stop ordering stuff and just work on stuff. But if there's any, if ever anything you want to talk about or have a question about, definitely let me know down in the comments because I'm going to need stuff to talk about. And yeah, I could talk all day about Axel. <laughs> so there's that option too. I just chat about how great he is. And okay, I'm just gonna briefly finish up these last few drills. Hello. Pan over to Axel so he can say goodbye. So we can say goodbye and then get going. Oh, it's stuck. Here we go. Okay. Oh, so I'm out of red wax. It is not sticking that well. So this is a good time to sign off. Press these down. Like I said, that glue is pretty intense. I don't think any of these are going anywhere. Axel, what are you up to? Even the tray is stuck on the side. There we go. Mm -hmm. Take the camera off. Whoop, sorry about that. And, hey bud, you sleepy? You tired? You look tired. I was like, oh, I'm just gonna lay here. Okay, well, we'll do another drill with me another day and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye guys. Okay, <clears throat> drill with me number two. We have some really good light right now and I thought this would be a great time to continue my drill with me. Just put my wax in. I'm going to quickly get started. Just been one of those days where I just feel like I've been going and going and going all day and <laughs> my kids as well. Just going and going and going. So, I don't have a whole lot of time to do a drill with me, but I definitely need the relaxation and kind of the, just a little bit of me time, a little bit of crafting time. So I'm gonna start up top with this green. Green is my favorite color, so I thought that would make it even nicer. And this is actually 3815, and that's symbol S on this canvas. I love this color. And it's coming across really well in this light. That is exactly what it looks like in the tray. Just think this is beautiful. This is S on my canvas, so I'm gonna get started. Now, I really enjoyed last night doing this drill with me. I haven't uploaded the video yet, so I thought maybe I could just tack on this one to that video. Axel is not behind me in the chair. There is still some sunlight in the living room. So he is on the top of the couch in the living room, lounging around like the little prince that he is. We actually had um, a friend's dog over. We were dog sitting and the pup left today. So I think Axel is Parti partially sad, partly, partly, partially sad that his friend is gone, but a little happy to get a longer nap in. They play all day, all day when they are together. Those little exhausted pups. So I really, I love this canvas because it is my dog. But one thing I am noticing with this company or this manufacturer is it is easy to read the symbols when my face is this close. But from a little distance away, the dark color, the dark colored symbols in a already black circle, it's difficult for me to check out. Now I do need to get my eyes checked again. It has been a while, so that could also be part of the problem but I'm kind of hunching over right now. I'm not sure if I'm 
punching over on the camera and I don't think I am but this green is really really pretty so I was trying to think of an Axel story that I could tell during this drill with me this picture and I will remind you what the whole picture is it's actually a picture of me kissing Axel I need a camera so you can see Actually, I'm not going to get a good angle on it, but picture of me kissing Axel's face. This picture, <laughs> this happened during a dog photo shoot. Yes, it did. So I think it was our anniversary. For our anniversary, you know, my husband was just kind of trying to think of a very creative gift that he could give me. And he, he did really good. He had a photographer, a pet photographer, come over to where we lived. And we lived right by a lake, a small lake with a little walking path and trees. It was very peaceful and quiet. And finding that in the middle of Northern Virginia is, well, you don't see that very much. But our community had a small little lake, was secluded. We loved it. So he had the photographer come over and we took cute little photos of us with Axel. And that was my anniversary gift. Or maybe it was my birthday gift. I thought it was my anniversary because we took them in the fall. Mm. Now I'm gonna have to think about that when he comes home from work today. That'll be the first thing. He'll come right through the door and I'll be like, was the photo shoot for my birthday or the anniversary? Because I need to make sure I get this correct for YouTube. But it was a really good pick, a, a really good present. <laughs> um, we found a uh, affordable deal on those large canvases that you can get for your wall. And at one point, Joe was joking like, yeah, let's just get a huge canvas of Axel and put it on our wall but like when he jokes about something that I actually want to do I find that to be my end of like okay let's do it and he was on a business trip and I ordered it fast shipping got it there I think I you know, asked my dad to come over and put it up on the wall and when my husband came home from the business trip <laughs> it was uh on a huge canvas, a picture of Axel located right above our fireplace. <laughs> Just really big right there. I mean, it was one of those amazing deals where you get a huge canvas for like $30. So I had to do it. And I wouldn't say he was speechless, but he was just like, oh, you got a canvas. And then the way the picture I used for the canvas was, is um, my husband and I were sitting on a bench. So it was our backs and the photographer was calling Axel's name. So he was looking back at the photographer. So it's his face in the middle and our backs on the side and the bench in the bottom of the photo. But when you wrap a canvas, it actually or when you do that and they print it on the canvas, um, it can cut off an inch or even two, depending how big it is, of the original photo. And it really changes the look of the photo. So in addition to him coming home and seeing a very large canvas on the wall, he quickly noticed that the two inches that were taken out were of him at the end of the picture. <laughs> So it really was our dog, my back, and half of him. <laughs> and that stayed, that stayed on our mantle, or above the fireplace mantle area, for years. Years. And um, I keep meaning to get another one of those large canvases made with all of the kids and like a really nice family photo but I haven't um we ended up 
putting it somewhere else in our house. I don't remember where we moved it to when we decided to get a TV for our living room. But that was definitely a statement, a statement piece. If someone came over to our house for the first time, we would have to explain why there was a massive, like, three foot by three foot picture of our dog on the wall <laughs> that my husband was cut out of. But, um, yeah. Professional photo of my pup. Oh, that is not an S. Here's another S. So... When I do it again, of course. <laughs> of course I would. I love my pup. Okay, coffee break. This mug I got at a, as a gift from a Frankfurt, Germany Christmas market like two years ago. And this year, in December 2008, we went to the Frankfurt Christmas market. We traveled there from Tunisia. And we actually had... Um, my husband had some work to do in Germany and we were on our way to the United States. So we all went and just said like, oh, we've got a night there. Let's, uh, let's check out the Christmas markets. I had never seen them before. And if you are a crafter, you will really love going to a Christmas market. It's these beautiful handmade items. And it's not what I, I thought it would be. I thought it would be um, like magnets an ornament because it's christmas themed but it was like handmade coffee mugs and very intricate nutcracker statues and beautiful my goodness beautiful handmade wooden clocks and wooden carved items and of course delicious you know handmade cookies and candies and treats oh my goodness hmm Christmas market is a crafter's dream. Mm. But yeah. So going to Germany next will be a change. And I think I talked about this in the previous um, drill with me that I'm just going to attach right onto this one. Our little Prince Axel, this little pup, does not like cold weather. And um, here's something else that I'm just going to tell you. I'm not even going to keep it secret. And I promise it is true. He likes dog clothing. Uh, I don't know if I can get it on video and just like slide it into one of my drill with me someday. But being a little chihuahua, he gets cold easily. So Germany is going to be really cold for him. And, and that's okay. He's, you know, he's used to cold living in Northern Virginia for a while. But um, I'm going to have to get him like a better little dog coat or something. So when he's outside, he can stay warm. But what I do is I have a few, a few sweaters. Because if we get his fur trimmed down in the fall or the winter or the early spring, you know, any of these times that it's not really hot here in Tunisia, he does get kind of cold. Sometimes when he gets scared, he also does that chihuahua shaking thing. And then he just ha is this tiny little dog with shaved fur shaking. And I have a few like little dog jackets or little dog, kind of like a dog sweater. And I just put my hands in it and I open up the neck part. And he sees that, runs over, and sticks his head right in. Like, I just want to be warm. And we're like, it's okay, little buddy. But the first time we get snow in Frankfurt, oh, he is not. He's just going to look at me like, Mom, no, I'm not putting my paws on that. And actually, I heard it doesn't, um, it doesn't snow that much in Frankfurt. Or there's quite a few, like, dustings or an inch or two. But then the, um, the temperature warms up enough where it's just above... Um, it's just above freezing and it, it melts away. So he might not have to deal with that too much. Yeah. I like how this is looking. I also really like how this section of S3815 uh, has these um, other letters, other di uh, diamond little drills that are going to be mixed in. So when I get there, I'm going to be able to take the drill and pop, pop, pop right in there. That's gonna be relaxing. <laughs> it's 
going to be great. But let's see. It is it is a harder to read canvas. That is true. Um, again, said it in the last video. We shipped our items. I, I shipped my diamond painting items from the United States because I just didn't have room in my luggage. And when I get the light pad, it's going to be really, really helpful. Am I... Oh, I got some more S's down here. Are there any mixed in? Like, I'm really having to look hard to make sure I'm not missing them. I did that a lot in my last painting. I would do a whole section, think I was done, and be like, oh, okay, there's there's more that I missed of the same letter and had to go back. Some of them are a bit difficult to read. So the S and the nine symbol um, looks similar, but that just, you know, just make sure I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. Totally zone out and I'm a-okay with that. This is going to be a really well blended background because there's at least one, two, three, four, five, six, six, maybe seven other colors that are going to fill in this greenery area in the back. And it's just gonna look beautiful the way it's blended together. Not having a large chunk of one color is really going to make this beautiful. Oh, I'm working in the space you can't see. I'm sorry about that, guys. Let me move that up. Here we go. Mm. Yeah. The light pad. Sorry, I don't know if I continued this thought. If I did, I'm going to say it twice within a minute. Having the light pad will be really great with this project. I'm looking forward to it. And I think it'll help me work faster. And I did the um, video showing the light pad and all the different stuff that I got as Christmas gifts. I got good responses of, you know, I have this one. It's really good. A, a light pad is going to help you work a lot faster. It's great that you got one. So I'm excited to try it. Things kind of happened so quickly when we left. I didn't want to start a diamond painting there and then have to... Box it up, put it in my luggage, hope it's okay. So after I opened the diamond painting and opened the light pad, I didn't start them. So I didn't get a chance to play with it before I sent it off. Oh no, Ooh, I pushed too hard and now it is really stuck. Let me get those good tweezers. Where did I put those good tweezers? Okay. Good tweezers are M I A. Are they? If I were good tweezers, where would I want to be? Huh. Like, they are gone from last night to tonight. They are gone. Where did I put them? Coffee black in it? No. I do know my kids were playing over here earlier, but I don't think. I think they learned their lesson. I lost my tweezers last time. And they, they were playing with them, so really I didn't lose them. They lost them. And um, I found them. And I was like, oh, thank goodness. I'm glad I, um, glad I found them. And I think just the fact that they had to deal with me sitting over here searching for tweezers for so long that they, um, they decided, like, oh, we're not going to mess with mom's stuff again. I can't find any tweezers right now. Any at all. So let me see if I can fix... Oh, ugh. Picked it off with my hand. I am sure that is not good. But there we go. Okay, now the glue on the back is stuck to my finger. Let me flip this over. Okay. Back on track. Hmm. 
Molar S. Really good. I've seen some diamond paintings, the, the pictures where people do this type of drill, and that's drill, like a drill style on purpose. And I wonder if it makes it easier to place the drills in the open spots when you get there. Now I enjoy popping them in, but I'm not sure if that actually will, if that's something that uh, doing a large section like this will make it easier. So I'm looking forward to trying that out when I get there. The, um, the space for the drills is a lot smaller on this diamond painting than the first one that I did. So that's been a little bit more of a challenge, but it's also a good challenge because it's gonna make me a better diamond painter because it's teaching me that I do not have room for air and I need to be more precise with my drills. <laughs> there we go, good. Perfect. My kids are upstairs running around and playing. I think they were playing princess when I went up there before I started. They have these little Disney princess heels on and it's a marble floor up there. So it's just like their heels. If you hear that noise in the background, that means the two little girls are close by. Yeah, this is, this is really helping me. The, the smaller area for my drills uh, this one I just did two drills ago. It's it's off. It's I need to get I need to get better at that. It's gonna be me a better diamond painter. There we go. There we go. And that one was a good one. So perfect. Let me see. Got a few more S's kind of all in this section. I, I said it before, it's gonna look so pretty when it's blended out, but yeah. So, make sure to include in the comments what you want me to talk about during my drill with knees. What, babe? I want four pairs of shoes. What do you need four pairs of shoes for? Okay guys, I think we're gonna cut this drill with me short because apparently we need to get four pairs of shoes to play princess. So thank you for watching. I'm gonna put all this together and I'll talk to you soon. Bye crafters.